Uh, you hear me good? Yeah, I'm good. Good evening and welcome to the Ross Shaver Ice Garden for this ACHA matchup between your Cowu Vulcans and the Colonials of Robert Morris. My name is Nolan Bison and alongside me, Jonathan Sakaguchi and Johnny. Cowu's coming in after an impressive win last night. Yeah, definitely. And then we're looking to ride the momentum of that win from last night into senior night today with two seniors on the team. I mean, looking to continue their push for the playoff. Only a handful of games left. If they're three points behind in Pitt Johnstown, so they're looking in for a big win here tonight against RMU. Yeah, looking for a big win, as you said, especially since that last matchup these two teams had last year. I know it was back and forth the whole way, so both teams looking for some sort of point here or try to get out to an early lead as both teams are getting ready to get this one underway here. Yep. Both teams about to get underway. This would be Anthony Mangle taking the face off for the Vulcans, and we're underway here just past 8 o'clock. Yeah, uh, it looks like uh, Cal's going to bring the pressure early here. Yeah, Cal, you're trying to look toward the pressures. That will be stopped there by a pop up check. That's the Vulcans looking for an early start here. That's Mangle up the wing, looking for his different options as that one comes towards the middle. Is that is Capello that sends one just wide of the net for the Vulcans. And we get sent back on net. Now give the Colonials the puck. Is that his number 12, Blake Logs? But that one is that one. A big save there by Capello, and that one catch the net and go out. Yeah, right down here in front of us in the corner. Or, or a lot of players on the team that have 20 plus points so far. Or like we've got four players here. Here, Manuel, or one of the guys we were talking about on early in the game, you know, 37 points, leads the team in power play goals with four forwards. Second on the team in goals right now. Yeah, Manuel really looking to step up here for RMU. Going to be looking to shut them down as much as possible as that one gets sent behind the net. As Heckman will try to reach out one for Vulcans. Both teams physical early here trying to get this puck, trying to get some sort of momentum as that's a shot there. For number 67, Norman Reisner. Is that one caught the net once again? Yeah, once again, and a lot of pucks out of play so far. I would have to agree with you, Johnny. Lots of different pucks, a lot more than what we saw last game yeah. during last game for the women's game. Yeah, uh, uh, a little bit of a tighter defense from the, on what we saw last game. Um, RMU is definitely coming out to play hey, so far. All right, let's see if they can keep up the pressure, or is Cal U gonna momentum gonna keep up so far? We'll find out here. Cal okay, U trying to lead something that has great pressure by Tingley here to get it down in the corner. And that's Riffner that was able to grab that one. RMU trying to get something just out of the reach of Gilbert. Cal cycling it back, back in their defensive zone as that would be Rosinski. Trying to get something going here for the Vulcans. So they set this one back up, back to Rosinski. Botrin trying to get something going as he takes this one himself. Trying to get an offensive present. Is that one just off the stick of Anden. My apologies. If I get any names wrong. Somebody lost a twig on that one. I didn't think it was Landon. And that was Rosinski that lost the stick there. It's a battle along the boards. It's both Cal U and RMU fighting here early, trying to get to know each other. And, you know, it's the one time that they played each other this season. Yeah, a rivalry matchup. Uh, but also a conference matchup that still ha has playoff implications. RMU's trying to squeak in into the final playoff spot. And RMU is as that one was cleared in there by Capello. As Parkinson got that one for the Vulcans, but RMU right back there. But a great steal there from Shearling for the Vulcans, trying to keep some sort of attack going here early. As that one catches the net once again, so it'll be a Vulcans faceoff down here in their corner. Yeah. Uh, Cal U coming in off of a, a five game winning streak, or excuse me, four game winning streak. And three of those have been here, here at the Ice Gardens last night with a big win in over IUP, five to one. And you know, for the Vulcans, anytime they play IUP, you always want to beat them. They're able to. As that one gets sent on that, and it looks as though that'll be a goal for the Vulcans. Yeah, yeah there's your, your first goal. 
goal early on. And the first goal there for the Vulcans, as I believe that's number 12, Zach Gush, the senior. So on senior night, he gets a goal for the Vulcans, put him up 1-0, 17-12 left in the first period. Uh, uh, first goal of the day for the Vulcans, because we didn't see a whole lot of offensive presence from the late 80s, but the, the men have come out to play here, this one. And the men coming out strong here, early lead here from Dush there at 17-12 will give the Vulcans a 1-0 lead. Is RMU going to look to answer back? That's number 16, Gorsak, for the Colonials, trying to get something going. That's going to be eight. As this is 2-on-1 now for the Vulcans. They take the advantage, looking towards the net, and that one just off the post. Great save. That was off the post for number 25, Chris Siak. The Vulcans really bring the pressure here early, trying to show RMU what they're made of. And that goal from Dush is his second of the season. And that one goes back for Dal Cortivo. So he still has control of this one. Vulcans trying to get something here as he sends that one off to Siak again. Vulcans looking for some sort of offensive presence here. Working back in their own defensive zone. He hands that one off to Pastor Williams. A little bit of a toe drag there. Not able to get anything going though. Both teams fighting back and forth here. RMU Petty just clears that one in for the Colonials and a big hit there from Gilbert trying to get his team going. Yeah, Cal's playing some tight defense there. there RMU's trying to find an answer for it, but I don't think, think they're going to get it this early. Yeah, Heckman using his speed here. He gets that one. So he's just trying to get it towards the middle, but getting pinned up there looking for some help as Tingley for the Vulcans comes in to help him there. Taylor looking for different options as they send that one to the point up to Heckman. The great offensive president, that one was tipped and just goes long for the Vulcans. Once again, another shot there from Anden. And the Vulcans so far, four to one in shots here. 15, 15 left, one nothing Vulcan after a goal from senior Zach Gush. Yeah, that was his second of the season so far. Or would you think with the seniors, they tried to score more. Uh, you, more but when you play defense, Hence, you don't see many goal scorers. Unfortunately, Eric Carlson's making me a liar out of that one this season for your Washington Capitals. Yeah, I would have to agree there. Definitely making a run as Army looking to get back into this one, but that was a great save there by John Popercheck, the goaltender from Washington, PA. Yeah, the local prospect. Eric Popercheck is 2-4-1 two and four on, two, four and one on the season. And with the save, with the goals against average of four or point oh one save percentage, leading the team with an eighty nine point three percent. Big percent there from the Vulcans goaltender. A so, little bit of an interference play there on both twenty eights. Is out Brian Baker that hit Mike Farringer for the Vulcans. Yeah, that could would have been called. Oh, it was a little bit late. Someone heads back towards the net towards Capello. Looking towards the other side, toward Del Cortivo. Vulcan get a little mix up here. Both teams back and forth here early. Not really much possession other than the Vulcans. That one goal that they scored. That one was blocked there by Parkinson once again. Really playing a good defensive game early in this one. Two blocks already. Yeah, I expected RMU to jump out to a little bit of a harder start than this, being fresh because they didn't play last night. Yeah, they Versus IUP playing Cal here last night as well. Yeah, big save there by Farringer. But even better save by, I believe that is number, I think that's number 30. I can't see. Number 33. Number 33. For the bulk, or for the Colonials, I don't. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the goalie number is, actually. I believe it's number 30, though. Nathan, or Mitten. Hmm. Don't know. Yeah, I can't read the number myself. We'll wait and see here. That is number 30. Yeah, I believe that is number 30. Nick Akara making some big saves here early for this Colonial team as we get out of a hot break as Pujolo brings that one around, trying to get around the Vulcan defenseman, but not able to as Heckman battles in the corner. Both teams really going at it here in board play. Really a big part of hockey. I mean, you see it in all levels, you know. Who's that team that wants to get down in the corner and dig deep? Good play that there by number 14. And in, in Shearing. 
think that Cal U would have shouldered that one and knock it out of the zone. As Heikman sends that one back for Rosinski. He's going to reset this one, and the Vulcans are going to get back in their way here. Rosinski looking for his options, looking towards Shearing. Shearing not able to get that one out, so Rosinski looks as though he's going to set that one back up. Maybe leave it for Heckman back there. He actually just sends that one across the ice towards Anden, so Anden will get this one in. Sends it over to Faringer. Not much going there for the Vulcans as that one gets clear, but a great play there by Rosinski to be able to save that one. The Vulcans trying to pressure here once again. Yeah, Cal is on that rotation play. And RMMU has not found an answer for that. As that one gets sent down the ice towards Capello, that will be an icing on RMU, so whoever was back out there has to get back out here on the ice now yeah. once again. And there's going to be some tired bodies for that Colonial team that were in there for, for a few minutes. So it's going to be interesting to see how this next play goes. It'll be interesting for sure as the Vulcans are going to look take advantage here. And 12.39 left, one nothing Vulcans at their goal early at the 17-12 mark of this period about five minutes ago. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen Cal Ute get set up in the offensive zone. And, and since that last goal possession. And both teams looking for something here as that one gets sent back and the Vulcans looking to take advantage here once again. That one gets taken in there by Capello but not able to get through so the Vulcans had to step up on a play but not able to grab that one. Is that the Colonials and Petty? But a great save there once again from Poplar check. Yeah, Cal, you just got to watch the turnovers in that gray area in the neutral zone. Oh, and it's going to come back to bite them later on. Cal, you really trying to get some sort of presence here. Early continue the pressure as Josh goes into the corner and looking towards the middle. Able to find a man, but just had to take that one around as that was Siak. Siak still control the puck, looking for his options. As Brzezinski throws that on and a great save there by the RMU goaltender. Yeah, the other senior... And Al Cortiva oh, was looking for the one-timer on that last setup. Okay, you're looking for something that's a little bit of a nifty little play there between both Del Quito and Siak, I believe that was back and forth action there, but great save from the goaltender, Akara, early in this one. Yeah, Cal, how are you starting to bring the pressure now? I think they found on a couple holes in that defense of RMU and they're looking to expose it and see if they can get another goal here. Here we go. Cal U's going to wrap up the season here uh, on next Saturday as they post George Mason University back here at the Ice Gardens. That is going to be a 6.45 start time for anybody that's going to try to you know, make it out here. Yes, yeah, Heckman went for that check there. A little bit of a hip check, as they would call it. And that one was blocked there by Heckman then. So first the hip check missed it, but then making it up by the block shot. Yeah. Yeah, seeing some old time hockey out here. Eric Gritty, he, he out here grinding. Yeah, a little bit of a grind for sure. Johnny would have to agree with you there. As both Vulcans look to try to get this one out, trying to just get something set up, not much going. As they have to reset this as they'll throw it over to Anden. Anden looking for different options. Lost that one for the twig. The Vulcans will once again reset with Heckman. Heckman up to Taylor. Taylor not able to get that one. And RMU really making a struggle at the moment for this Vulcans team. Yeah, uh, Cal U's got to watch. They've been trying to get out of the zone, but they keep turning it over. I talked about that earlier. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. As once again, the Vulcans trying to get out of the zone. As that is Rosinski, the defender, trying to make it around. One of the Colonial players didn't catch the number, but they're really looking for something as they look towards Taylor. Taylor looking for something as other Vulcans calling for it and right out in front towards Rosinski. Nothing going there as I'm upset fans here. And, they thought that was looking, a looking for a call. Oh, nothing's gonna, gonna be done there on that one. Mm -hmm. and thought there might have been a trip, but we'll find out oh, if they make it flat later. Yeah, nothing going on as Parkinson will reset this one. And actually no, it'll be Capello. And actually no. They'll just hand it off again, so one, two, three, they're off like that. Yep, yep and they're going to fly on this one. As, well, as that one goes oh. off the goal post there for, I believe that was number 28, Mike Farringer, yeah. off the post. Yeah, he had the goaltender beat on that one, um, but just rung it off the iron. 
And then he tips that one and just makes Archara hold that one for the Colonials. But a great chance there, able to work down through and right off the post. Could have been a 2 nothing game here about halfway through the first period. Yeah, Cal starting to get the chance. And it's Farnsworth, the captain of this Vulcans team. And looking to get on the score sheet, it is he's fourth in, on the team in scoring right now. Oh, 26 points, six goals, and 20 assists on the season. Yeah, some pretty good stats there for Farringer this season. Looking to continue to that tonight as Vulcans team trying to continue the press here. Someone gets intercepted right there in the middle by Farringer as well. So an impressive shift here. Someone gets reset back towards Del Cortivo. Lots of board play going on here as Farringer goes for the hit. Solid hit. He's doing a lot out there. First the post, and then the system, making nice passes, and the hit really stepping up here. As RMU will get this one, as that is number 18, Serlinging. Throws that one over, and that one goes off the back of the net there for Longs. Yeah, this game's starting to get a little, a little more physical here. Here, Cal, you. Both teams continue the pressure here. Is that one of the fast break there for the Vulcans? But a big save there for the Colonials as that was our car that robbed Capello. Yeah, nice breakaway chances. This one goes for icing. I think it's been back and forth a fair, very physical game so far. Or let's see if they can keep this up, up for another eight minutes. Yeah, great play. Those shots are now seven to three here. Eight oh one left in the first period is one nothing Vulcans. So Kara really having to stay on his toes here early. Yeah, Cal, has been putting the pressure on. Let's see how, how long they can keep that up. It'll be interesting to see, as you said, Johnny. Should be an interesting one the rest of the way as it's a foot battle between both teams as Heckman goes back for that one. So he's able to beat out Petty. Gallagher, there's that one in. That one just intercepted by the Vulcans and they'll just clear that out. Back to Griffner. He'll set this back up for the Colonials. Trying to get something going here. 7.33 left. And then we get sent back in. Pass for as he's going to go in for the hit but not able to. And that one gets right out in front. And that one's a goal there for RMU as that's Joseph Petty. That put one right past goaltender John Polachek. Really just kind of popped out in front. He's able to bury that one. Yeah, on the turnaround wrist shot. Uh, he got him on, him on the near side. He, we're all tied up here. Er, as I spoke of earlier, Nolan, and Cal, you had to watch those turnovers, and it came back to haunt them. Yeah, really had to watch the turnovers, and right there just kind of popped out in front, and not much Popel Chuck could have did there. He was left pretty much alone, and that was Petty that just fired one past him. And this one tied up 1-1 one -one with 7.20 left. The Vulcans look to get back on the attack here as they get it right back with and They throw that one right towards the net almost. Not able to get that one to go in. Yeah, Cal using that all fired up. Uh, almost put that one in there. As Capella threw that one back behind the net. Vulcans just trying to get anything to go right now. A little bit of a cycle going on right now. Over to the far side. And a big shot there from Anden, but just goes high and wide. Yeah, if that last shot was on goal, well, we pro well we're probably talking about a two to one game, but just missed, missed on the high side of it. And Vulcans continuing the pressure as that went off the twig as well as that was Del Cortivo that fired one and went off the post as well there. So lots of posts here early in this one. Yeah. Uh, you keep firing those shots, eventually one of those has to go in. And eventually one does have to go in. As they get the puck back once again, the Vulcans are really just bringing the pressure right now. RMU getting lucky that they got that first shot as that one goes off the stick of Anden. Could have had a clear and open shot there. Yeah, so. Cal, you, you're starting to get their chances. RMU start, starting to turn them over. There's Akaro. Thought he was going to hold that one. Throws that one out, actually. We'll give RMU 
possession back, 5.55 left here in this first period. 1-1 after a recent goal from the Colonials and John Petty, number 25. That one gets sent deep. Wilkins chasing after that one as that's Parkinson going for it. The assistant captain here for this Vulcans team. Sensky just clears that one in. How are you looking for something? As looked as though that they're going to be hit. They're trying to complain that there may have been a penalty as a high stick, but not getting anything. Yeah, he was he was barking at the refs, looking for the call. Oh, but uh, unfortunately for Cal, you Shearing's not going to get anything from that one. And and there there's the penalty right there that. You know, Cal U was arguing about, and then they drew one themselves, and now they'll send them to the boxes. That was Mike Farringer that drew that penalty. With two minutes on the board, so give RMU a chance to take the lead here, 5-11, 1-1, here in the first period. Nolan Baseline, Jonathan Sagiguchi, bringing you live action here from the Ross Shaver Ice Garden. Yeah, and Parkinson is over there talking to the refs, uh, saying what happened. And even the refs looks like they're talking about it, so I don't know what the dispute may be here. Yeah. Uh, looks like we're going to get a hooking call here. And Coach Jason Greenway for the Vulcans does not, does not look very happy with Farringer after that call at all. Nope. And that's where you need that discipline to kick in and you know that you can't do anything about it and let it get past you. RMU looking for something here. They set this one up. Battle one. Looks like a 1-3-1 one, one almost that they're trying to set up here. Yeah, they're looking to set up that umbrella of power play style. Looks like Cal U's going to go with the diamond look. Yeah, it looks like diamonds is a big battle in front of the net. The big save there, Poplar Chuck. The Vulcans just trying to get it out, but kept in there by Makoska. But that one gets sent out and be set up by number 12, Blake Logs for RMU. Yeah, I think, I think Chop got a, a stick on that one and clear it out. That one goes in and out. It looks as though we grabbed that one really quick. Yeah, Cal, you look good early, but now they're starting to get a little sloppy. So, oh, they're going to have to talk this one over. Or as we get a line change here for the Vulcans and RMU, it's going to bring in that second power play unit, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like RMU will be switching it up. 111 left here in this power play. So try to see if they can get something else. Coach, head coach Chris Cunningham for the Colonials changing some things up here against this Vulcans team. That one Surprised gets we didn't get any, too many men on the ice call for that one. As one of the players for RMU was still on the ice trying to make the change. Thought the ref might have seen that. Yeah, very interesting call as this one gets sent in by Gilbert. And actually, my bad, by Davis. Is that a big save there? Once again by Poplar Chuck. Last from Norman Riffner from the point. Yeah, it looked like a Zdeno Charles style slap shot off of that one. Um, I have to agree with you as that puck's bouncing. The Vulcans just going to try to get this one out. As Del Cortivo tries to get that one out, but a board battle over there in the corner. Both teams. Got a couple Colonials and a few Vulcan players down there. Everybody looks like RMU is going to come out with it. And it's hard to see from our vantage point. What may be happening right down there with a couple fans down there in the corner. That one almost gets out, but a big save there from Davis as he shoots that one on net, and the Vulcans looking to get that one out, and they will. That one just goes past Davis, and the Vulcans will clear, clear that penalty for Farringer. So back to 5-on-5 five five is once again the Mario Kart, and the Mario noises <laughs> goes by. <laughs> it's all sides there for the Vulcans just dumping that one in, get it reset. 2.55 left here, 1-1 one, one. in this matchup, Vulcans against the Colonials. And Cal Cal with a little momentum now. Well, if they can get a hold of the puck. And Cal you looking for something as that possible shot went off the CX wrong and that one goes high and wide. Couldn't tell by the number, can't really see from this angle. The Vulcans trying to get possession back as the RMU has kind of controlled this second half for the period. Petty over there in the corner, looking for options, looking towards Gallagher. As that one gets sent in the front, and a wide open Quinn Gilbert, number 17 for RMU, puts him up two to one here 
Cal U kind of got caught watching. And Gilbert took advantage of that one, Johnny. Yeah, Cal. Yeah, the, uh, the Colonial old saw on opportunity and took it. And another turnover by the Vulcans leads to another goal. Oh, and they just got caught sleeping out there, Aaron Nolan. Yeah, once again, like I just said, it kind of looked as though that RMU was taking advantage, and they just did take advantage. And now a 2-1 to one here with 2.18 left, so let's see how Cal responds here in the final two minutes of this first period. If I'm on Cal, I'm just going to try to get a locker room, go to the intermission, and see if we can figure something out. As we got a big hit on the far side. All right, uh, and number 17. Ian Quinn Gilbert or from from the Colonials. As Farringer tried to make that pass over to Schering, but not able to find him. They take a big blast there as that was Del Cortivo, but not able to find the net there. That one just went wide, so the Vulcans looking for something here. They tried to save that one, but RMU able to grab that one, and now a two-on-one here, but not able to get anything going as Del Cortivo ended that drive. So the Vulcans looking for something here. Back and forth action here now. Four and three. Vulcans looking for some speed, trying to work through the middle. Not able to. Farringer go to the far side, into the middle, and it looks what as though save. the goal he got is that was Arcara as the RMU. A couple guys came together as that was Baker that was not happy with the push. Now talking to somebody else as well. Yeah, Brian Baker not happy. Yeah, uh, there's some chirping going on. On over there, or by the benches. I think the refs are going to separate it and tell them to break it up. Oh, but good play there, there by Cal U. Who, great shot. Uh, just a hot goaltender right now. Uh, Cara playing some steady defense, or steady goaltending back there. Shots 10 to 9 in favor of the Colonials. Yeah, Cal U who hasn't had a good shot in a while. Cal okay, U looking for something here. That was probably their best chance since. The beginning half of this period. Dush just trying to clear that one in for the Vulcans. That was played there with a high stick. Or at least no. Thought that was, but apparently not according to the ref. Yeah, they're going to clear it so we get a save there. Most popular check saves that one right at the goal line. Well, just less than a minute here. 58.8 seconds left in this first period. Yeah, Papal check had, had to hold on to that one. And otherwise, it was going to skip that in on a weird bounce. And kind of a weird angle trying to hold it like that. The Vulcans try to get that one, but RMU able to get control there. The Faringer able to get by, and it's a two on one, almost a three on one now, and it's all sides. Fans are not happy about that one. They're not happy at all, as the ref called that from past the blue line. Didn't yeah, Gilbert shaking his head saying in in no way. Yeah, that was that was the chance that the Vulcans were looking for as Tingley just went over the line just ahead. Yeah, and that was the best opportunity for him um, because RMU was start starting to get caught on sleeping on the middle of a change. As the ref is now talking to them about to RMU about something at the moment, don't know what. Can't really tell. Maybe who was supposed to be out on the ice and who wasn't, don't know. Cal U wins that face off as Heckman sends that one over for Rosinski. He just fires that one on the pads and RMU will try to get some sort of rush here with about 35 seconds left in this first period. Yeah, that's it. If Cal can get another rush up the ice real quick, try to score and go in the locker room with a little bit of momentum. Cal okay, you're going to look for something, but RMU not going to let that happen as that's battle along the boards over here. That one will head back into the defensive zone towards Pulua as he'll send that one up. The Vulcans just trying to get to that one as that was a big save there by Poplar Truck. Just about at the end of this first period. About four seconds left and they'll come through this one. A uh, late last chance but nothing going there for the Vulcans. So a two to one lead here for the Colonial. Johnny, what do the Vulcans got to improve here for this second period? Definitely got to watch the turnover. Whereas Cal's gave up, up too many of those so far or in this first period, and that has come back to haunt them um, as they're down on two to one going into the locker room. So definitely you got to watch that at play a little bit tighter hockey he going into the offensive zone. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there, but we'll be back with more Vulcans hockey here on CDTV Sports 1.
Welcome back here to the Ross Shaver Ice Grinders. We're underway here already for the second period. My name's Nolan Bison alongside me. Tons and Sack Gucci and Johnny, we're right back into it. Yeah, Cal who's coming out hot. Look at in the build off of something here. We're in the, the second period of play here. They're down two to one. Shots are favoring in RMU to 12 to 10. After Cal you got off to that hot start in the first. After that hot start, and it looks as though maybe the door's open? I think the door might have uh, accidentally got knocked open on that one. That's the thing about old arenas. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, these boards are pretty new since, if you don't know, 2017, this rink won the Hockeyville for... Craft Hockeyville. Oh, we, oh, you had the Penguins down here. I don't here, think they played here. They didn't play here, but they did come down to the arena. Hmm. Uh, it was cool to see them down here, or especially someplace local like this. This is the second arena in PA that's gotten it. And so, a bunch of the upgrades, new lighting and everything throughout the building. It's pretty cool to see. And the uh, arena around us gets upgraded. This one just goes out in the Vulcans. We'll come back with this one as this is tingly looking to reset here. She looks over towards Sayak. Sayak looking for different options, working around the side. Trying to get it towards the net, but just nothing going for him. Vulcan trying to come out with a faster response here. Yeah, they're getting their chances, just can't get anything on goal right now. Now RMU is bringing the pressure. RMU really bringing the pressure here. But Cal U trying to do something here. That one was just tipped wide by Shearing. Shearing working around the boards up to Siak. Cal U tried to get a stop there, but not able to. As the Colonial is working through that one as I believe that was number 25 for them. Petty. Yeah, good play from RMU. Due to get Cal U back into their own zone. As the Colonial steal that one. The rebound attempt there, but a great save there. Pablo your chest. They would have grabbed that one and not let any further dues happen there. The yeah, RMU still forcing the turnovers there. there they've got to, to settle down on and tighten it up. Yeah, RMU still forcing those turnovers, really. This one back in the ray. Hard shot on that one. And tipped aside from Cal U. And that one was just tipped to the side. He said the Vulcan looking for something as Rosinski. Looking to get things underway here, trying to get something going. That one was just tipped long for Shearing and Shearing trying to get something going here. This is just nothing going as the Colonial playing a tight defense. Yeah, Cal, you, you thought they had something, and, but. That one made uh, it through Riffner over to the far side, but nothing. Once again, just back and forth action as that was Capello playing good defense. No one Capello. Yeah, but both sides are starting to tighten it up defensively. Yeah, both sides work defensively, as you said. As Faringer tried to get it deep, but not able to. As Capella just sends that one up the boards a little bit. That one tried to be swung out of the air. A little bit of messy play, too. So this one's going to go back for icing, as Dal Cortivo got to that one first. Yeah. And don't forget, guys, is we have Vulcan basketball once again on Wednesday night. I think Cal U, who is going to be home for that one. Hope you know who they're playing. I'm trying to remember. I want to say hey, it was Edinburgh. Or no, they're playing IUP. It's the rivalry matchup it is, again. It is the rivalry matchup against IUP Wednesday night at the Convocation Center. So if you're into basketball as well as hockey, come out. <laughs> as I don't think the men's team has a game Wednesday, so... Now they, they play, they, it's double headers for the rest of the season. Yeah. Well, they only have one game left here at home. Does that one just get sailed wide there for Andon? But I believe they only have one game left in the season. I believe. Yeah, yeah they play a George Mason University next Saturday. Here. Hey, here, at the, here at the Ice Gardens. Unfortunately, we can't make it for that one. We will be up at Edinburgh University as a penalty is getting called here. I think RMU is going to the box. And uh, it was actually for the Vulcans as I was on. Emery Anden, the forward from right down the road, Belvernon PA, as he caught. 
a local product. I couldn't tell who he caught up high. Maybe number 15, Puhula. Up, up high, he pretty much, he got. pretty much cross-checked him right towards the head. Some frustration coming out for this Vulcans team. It's Well, it was for sure a penalty on Andon. And it actually looks like they're getting on four and four, so I think that may be where RMU's frustration is coming for because RMU has a man in the box as well, so I think they're just getting on both four for both of them. And now, and they're, going, now they're going over the scorekeeper's bench. Yeah, but the way it looks, I believe they're going to call both of them four and four hockey, yeah, but probably both for interference or roughing, one or the other. One for high stick, I think. We'll find out here in a moment. And either way, a number 15 for RMU. Yeah, Pahula. It's RMU trying to kick this one off. Riffner looking for a different opportunity, but that one was deflected off of Capello. The Vulcan's going to look to take advantage here. Yeah, a lot of Four open ice two. here to play on. Vulcan's trying to get something. Looks as though they may set it up. That one was just tipped wide there by Faringer. And actually not by Faringer, by Siak. As Gilbert able to get by. Siak back up again. So they announce the penalties in the background. Siak with a rifle of a shot, but a big save there once again by Akara. You were right on the, on the penalty calls there. No. Well, we had a big hit there. Yeah. There, both of them going for roughing. Yeah, I don't think Siak really tried to do that. I think he just kind of didn't catch the puck and caught him instead. The Vulcans looking to take advantage here. Tingley looking for something here, looking over towards Siak. Siak, a big hit again. Once again, oh, and late hit, and the ref didn't call it on that one. Yeah, he was looking right at the play. As you go the other way here, things starting to heat up here in this matchup. 14.55 left in the second. This Tingley trying to get in the action over there, trying to get that puck as he's able to. He starts it up the ice, trying to get some offensive power going here for the Vulcans on this four and four. As he just fires that one wide, but able to get his own rebound. Tingley still has control of the puck. RMU just comes through, powers through there, and that one will be an icing. But it's a foot race. It looks as though they're going to call it all the ice ain't, but RMU who's up in arms because it looked like like the, like the goalie played it on that one. Yeah, the goalie on did. On number 33, on Poplicek. Yeah, Poplicek did definitely touch that one, so I did not. I, I figured he was just playing it just because he saw the guy coming. But according, according to the ref, he thinks that the player caught him, unless they're just going to call it a mistake and have a center ice face off, yeah, which it looks like they will. Yeah, they're going to say yeah, that was a mistake and just have it here at center ice. Another seven seconds on the four on four play. And it doesn't look like Cal U is too upset about that because I think they thought the same thing. As tried to get one last shot there for Rosinski. That one was a big block shot there. Back to five on five here. Two yep. to one. Colonial was 14 10 left here in the second period. Yeah, big block there by Brian Baker a moment ago. Oh, for RMU. That was a shot on that there by Parkinson. Just missed wide, I believe. Akara got a piece of that with his toe. His, that one was tipped wide there by Davis for the Colonials. Make sure that one didn't catch the net. Brzezinski throws that one just wide again. Team's back and forth action here. He's getting some good chances. Now if he can just get one on goal. That one was just kept in. That one goes over the net. Vulcan's pressure in here. Trying to make RMU make a mistake here. Heckman just trying to do something here. Looks down low. Yeah, Heckman thought about shooting on that one, decided to pass instead. Heckman with the pass again. And that one just caught the pad. I don't even think Akara saw it as Faringer ripped the shot in there. And I just think Akara kind of fell down and it just landed there as you saw the frustration yeah. of Faringer. Yeah, he. He didn't see the shot and just landed on top of it. In another second, uh, Cal, you might have tied this one up. And Akara really didn't see that one, even for a tall goaltender the way he is. Very tall, not seeing that one at all. 
The Vulcans looking to continue the pressure as they're able to keep that one in. But that one gets out and Colonial is back on the rush once again. That one gets dumped in and that one will just be held by Popier check. And caught that one like a center fielder <laughs> off the play. Yeah, maybe played baseball back in his day. Might have. <laughs> I really hope we're saying his name right, too, because we're saying it a lot tonight. I know. Oh, uh, again, uh, we do apologize for pronouncing any of these names wrong, folks. Yeah. It's tough. Always get out to the games. Fans will come up and be like, hey, he said my son's name, son or daughter's name wrong. I'm like, well, I'm sorry. You know. Yeah, this isn't what I can minor league baseball or something. I'll fix it for next time. <laughs> next time we play. Your yeah. team, as that one gets sent down, there'll be an icing there on the Colonials as don't have a number for whoever this player is as it's number six for the Colonials, but there is no number six on the roster. Yeah, at least not on the one that they gave us. Yeah, on the one that we were provided, no number six. So, But we saw that as well, I believe, for the Vulcans. I believe Anthony Manuel is playing as number 22. Mm -hmm. I think. Who knows? We're just here announcing. Having fun. That one gets sent towards the corner. Vulcan's looking for something. Siak with a backhand. Almost finds a net, but not able to as Vulcan's still bringing the pressure. Now Cortivo throws that one over the far side. Riffner sends that one up the ice. And Douche able to grab that one and actually gets plowed into the boards. And the Vulcan's looking to free attack here as this is Siak once again working around that hip check. And yeah, Cal, he was looking for an interference call there for a moment. Able to get around that defender as well. The magical number six, whoever that is out there. Don't know who. As Dush gets this one. Looking over towards Siak, almost trying to do a windmill pass there. Hit it out of the air, but not able to get to that one. And yeah, Cal, you still bringing the pressure. And Cal, you really bringing the pressure here. As that one was a rocket there by number 22, I believe it's Bailey Plaster Williams. Fires one off the crossbar and in, and we got a tie game here. 2-2, two, two, 11, 41 left in the second period, and your Vulcans respond to tie this one up. Great shot there, Eric Calhoun, who knew they were going to get a, a goal here if they kept get, keeping their note. It was down on the ground, and it paid off on a turnover from RMU nonetheless on a clearing attempt. And we're all tied up. Yeah, that line of Douche, Siak, and Plesser or Williams, if that is the correct player, it's either him or Emmanuel. We'll, we'll get the, the goal call here about in a say, We'll get the goal call for sure. But whichever one it is, that line was forcing them there and made sure that one got in the net as the Vulcans respond back and continuing the pressure here. And that was Anthony Manuel that scored that goal. So he's wearing number 22 tonight for some reason. But no matter what, big goal by Manuel. The Vulcans do a little dip to do ya around the man. Not able to his end and working deep. And that'll be a penalty on RMU as the Vulcans really pressing here right now. Yeah, that is going to be either 21st or excuse me, the 18th of the season for Manuel on that one. And the Vulcans really bring the pressure as they're trying to get something set up with the extra attacker out there right now. Six on five. Vulcans looking for something, but that one tipped off. Couldn't, couldn't see them. who it tipped off for one of the Colonials, so it gives the Vulcans the power play. 10-42. Manuel ties it up 2-2 here in the second period. The Vulcans off to the power play. Yeah, number 14 in, in Gallagher. Or, for, or the Colonials going into the box for slashing. And off to the box for slashing, as you said. Johnny the Vulcans, first attempt here in the power play. Yeah. Let's see if they can make RMU pay for that. Uh, now with the Vulcans retaking the lead in the shot department in 18 to 14. 18 to 14, the Vulcans for sure looking for something here. As Brzezinski looks for his options, looking over toward Manuel. Manuel looking far side. Now a big love save back to back there on Shearing. Two saves back to back by a car robbing him at the net front. Yeah, uh, good, good opportunity there from Cal U. 
who's one more or bounce and they, they probably score, but we'll see what they can do. They still have another minute 42 on the power play. As the Vulcans get that one back, Brzezinski looking over his options, looking for Emmanuel right to the middle and almost sneaks in there for Anden, really ready for a, a goal Big here in this corner. day. The Vulcans bring the pressure and that one gets sent high and wide. Brzezinski keeps this one looking over for his options, looking at Farringer and that one just gets saved there in the front by the screen to the Vulcans. Lots yeah. of opportunities there. Minute 20 left in the second line coming out. Yeah, Emmanuel was calling for the one-timer on the far side, but he, but they didn't get it to him. So, so he's going to the bench, shaking his head as we get the second power play unit out here for Cal U. Yep. See if they can keep this momentum rolling. Both him and Farringer, Emmanuel and Farringer, both calling for that puck. So both of them go hungry right now as Vulcans win this faceoff as well. Trying to get something set up here with the second unit. As now Cortiva looks over for his options. Back to him. Looking for that corner and he found it in the corner. Dow Cortivo snipes it in the top right corner. It's three to two Vulcans as they convert on that power play goal. Yeah, uh, Cal, you make an RMU pay for that one. When they got the rotation going, they want it. And I believe for Dow Cortiva, oh, that is going to be his, I believe that's his third of the game now. Or excuse me, second, and on the season, and I'm getting mixed up oh, with, with shoes from earlier. Yeah, I believe those two names got mixed up, but the Vulcans really bringing the pressure here up three to two now. We're just down two to one, about five or so minutes ago, responding back here and taking advantage of the Vulcans, showing yeah. what they can do here. This is the Colonia is looking to respond here. And they're almost able to as that one just goes wide. Vulcan's looking for something here as that one will get sent down and chased down by Davis. Siak looking for something. He just yeah. lays a mini hit on him. Yeah, they're going to give the assist to Ooh, Tingley on that one. When the kid hit on Mount Airy, Maryland. And it's a breakaway for the Colonials. As RMU wanted a slashing call there as I believe that was Serlinging got slashed there it looked like but the ref did not see it so Vulcans get lucky there because that could have either been a slash or even a penalty shot. I think Inky was, was far away enough that would have been in a penalty shot on that one um, but I think the problem was the puck rolled away from him it looked like it started to skip up as it went into the corner. Yes it really did as Siak settles that puck down and sends that one on and it's a two and one here for the Vulcans as they send it towards the middle not able to get anything as he just sends it right on net as he looks towards Siak. Nobody there once again. Oh, and that one's offside, but yeah. I don't know. That one was close, that Johnny. One, that was really close, but the refs are going to say, hey, that uh, at number 20 for Cal U, U, U Carpella oh, was just across the line out of Bradenton, Florida. Yeah, I mean, they're getting paid to do it, so. You say Florida. Bradenton, Bradenton, Florida. Yeah, uh, right outside of Sarasota, Florida. South of Tampa. At, uh, the Pirates, uh, Marley, or not Marley, well, technically, yes, but also spring training home, which we'll be getting ready for that here in a couple of weeks. It is spring training, soon to be. As Vulcans work that down in the zone, as that's Andon looking for something here, very all over the puck here tonight. That one gets sent around. Vulcan's able to get to that one in time. It has Dow Cortivo. He will send that one back, and that one goes behind the net for Andon. Looking for his options. Circles. Still looking, looking for Dow Cortivo. Over the side and just flinged on the shot there by Faringer. But this entire line working hard as one of the RMU players laid out one of the Vulcans in front. That one just goes wide there. And lots going back and forth here. Somebody without a twig there. Or we got a man down on by the net. I can't see the number. Here, but it looks like so. Oh, cheap shot there or from RMU. Yeah, cheap shot there from one of the RMU players. And can't tell what is going on as looks as though number 26, Joseph Chop, is chopping at one of the RMU players. As this player is down, and it doesn't look like there's any. Oh, here comes the medical staff person coming out right now yeah. but yeah, the, the player that went down on was Jared Taylor for Cal U who the, took the shot from Valencia uh, PA 
And there's a lot going on there in front of the net. A lot of chopping back and forth at each other. And then I think that cross check pretty much got them. And then after the play, one of the RMU players pretty much just shoved them over. Yeah, so. took Taylor out. Oh, and he's skating over. Right now, both captains for, for each team are talking to the referee at center ice. And as we look at the Atlantic region rankings as of January 31st, Dartmouth up there at the top with 10.14 as their overall rating. But George Mason right there behind them as the injured RMU player able to get up and skate off on his own. But tell you nowhere in that top 10 so far, but no, but got to be it, right behind Pitt Johnstown. Yeah, and I think with a win, win finish strong on towards the end of the season here with a win tonight over RMU and a win in next Saturday against George Mason University is going to help out. Yeah, that game against George Mason should be a good one. Be interesting to see that one. Kind of wish we were here for that one. Yeah, but uh, we will not uh, be here. We will be covering Edinburgh University. He versus Cal U up at Edinburgh uh, in another PSAC West Division matchup. Uh, a little bit of a sibling rivalry there for me because that's where my sister Abigail is. Really? She still goes there, huh? Yep, she's a sophomore or business communication major up there. Is she going to come out to the game? She hasn't said if she is or not yet. And hmm. Well, after all of this, it looks as though Cal U's going to get a penalty. I think there's a penalty on each side there. It's either one or two. For sure, a penalty on number eight, Jared Taylor, for the Vulcans. Yeah, he's in the box. But it almost looks like there's two guys in the box. For the Vulcan, so because there's a goaltender, but then it looks like there's another guy, but I can't tell if he's in it or not in it. Yeah, I I can't tell from here. I guess we're got to wait for the officials to solve this one and out. It looks as though that they're going to call one of the RMU guys as well to the box. So mm -hmm. another four and four here, or maybe not. Yep. I guess it would just be a power play here for the Vulcans. Yeah, uh, I think this could be a power play for RMU. Ooh, or that's what that's where I was getting at. Ooh, but ooh, but the the captains are still talking to the officials at center ice over near the RMU bench. A lot, not, a lot going on here. Yeah, not, not sure what's going on here. I see three players for RMU you and three for Cal U. There's only one name on the up on the Jumbotron right now for a penalty and that's against Taylor or for Cal U. It's kind of hard to tell what exactly is going on. Looks as though all the well, it looks as though that they settled, whatever it was, so it looks as though just RMU is going to get a power play out of all this. As players don't seem to be happy, but it looks as though that will be an RMU power play here. That was penalty there on Taylor. So, yeah. uh, cleared that one up. Uh-oh, uh I think that might be a delay of game because I think it tipped out all over the net. And actually, that more than tipped out over the net, John. And that one came into the stands as one of the fans grabbed it down there. It came through the net and down. So that's how fast that puck was coming out. But the Vulcans look for a big power play here, or penalty kill, as that yeah. one just gets deflected wide. And I guess that's not going to be a penalty. They're going to say it was tipped out. As Bahula looks for his options here, looking for the middle of the net, but not able to find Petty. The Vulcans looking to stand strong here on the penalty kill. To the point. Baker looking for his options. Doesn't have anything looking down low to Pahula once again. Pahula over the far side. Now it goes, sends high and wide as Parkinson tried to get that one out and he's able to get that one out. A great battle there from Parkinson. And a great battle there is. That was number 28, Mike Faringer, that laid out. The number other 28. number 28, Brian Baker. So, hey, well, Solid hit. That was a, an old-time hockey hit there. It was an old-time hockey hit. Both 28s have been going at it each other tonight as that one was cleared down the ice by the Vulcans as Dush will provide a little bit of an attack here. Yeah, Cal, you starting to bring the pressure. Even though they're on the penalty kill, oh, I think they might try to get a shorty if they get a chance. And both teams... Really starting to get chippy at each other as Dush hit number 15. Pahula into the boards and then 
he slashed him right back at him. So back and forth action here. Both teams looking for something. And a big save there by Popular Jack. Yep. As the Colonial is trying to find something here as Logue sends that down low to Pahula. Pahulu with the shot, but a good save there by Popular Jack. There's a big screen in front between both Wierzynski and I believe that is Baker as well. Yeah, uh, they've been chirping back and forth all night. You know, let's see what they can, get, you know, if this is going to break out into something. Um, but they've got to watch. We still got nine seconds on the penalty kill. We have to go. They're about to get this one back underway. Nine seconds left. Maybe look for Jared Taylor, the forward on the way out of the box, but it doesn't look as though they're going to be able to as that one gets sent into the net. So maybe they will, two seconds left, so they may be able to hit Taylor on a fast break if they're able to win this one. Yeah, they're got to win this one clean and get it out off the center quickly. Even if, well, I mean, you can't really launch it because the scoreboard's not that high, but if you could launch it up a little bit, at least get it above the player's heads. Yeah, good lob pass. And almost able to, I don't think they realized how much time was left as this one will be taken back in by Davis. Colonial's looking for a response here. And Vulcan, look. Vulcan's looking for their own response as well as Siak just clears that one down. As Faringer will go in for that one. So he leaves that one for the other Vulcan. And that one gets stuck over there on the boards. As Manuel tries to get that one. Faringer goes in for the hip but not able to get it. Battle down here right in front of us. One of the first, actually, honestly. Oh, there's another turnover. There's the Vulcans. Once again, commit another turnover, but a big save there. But no, actually, in and out of the gloves. So the Vulcans looking to answer back. Three on two here. Siak trying to do something around Davis, but not able to. There's the entire line out here for the Vulcans, but Siak able to grab it. Do a little wrap and almost oh, goes in the net, almost off the feet of Davis and into the net, but puck luck there for RMU as the Vulcans continue this pressure. Yeah, Siak looking for his 23rd of the season. As that one just sails wide, the Vulcans really bringing the attack right now as they look towards the point. Now they look all the way back down towards Faringer. Siak looking for Faringer at the switch sides here. Both teams battling strong here. That one just cleared deep once again. And nobody there this time for the Vulcans as they just clear that one out, but no, they're not able to as the Vulcans get to that one. Yeah, too much traffic in front for that one. Good, good pressure still from Cal U. As Sloan for the Colonials, for a name that we haven't said a lot today, almost had a breakaway, but Vulcans able to catch up to him as trying to deal some sort of pressure here and try to lock the Colonials down. Up 24 to 18 in shots, 3.20 left here in this second period. The Vulcans get a break here. Siak once again, seems like he's been out there forever. Fires that one just wide. And just a little bit of a throw back on the net there by Chop, almost like a chop. <laughs> so first he got chopped down, got chopped, and then now he just chopped it. The name's working perfect. Oh, boy. No one wants the jokes today, everybody. <laughs> you got to. It's cold in here. You got to say something to make us laugh and get us warm. The I'll say this. I just warmed up a little bit in here or since they closed that uh, door. We're in yeah, a lot better than when we first got here for the women's game. Yeah, don't get your hopes up. Those turn out to open it again. So. Yeah, but we'll be back inside <laughs> where it's nice and warm. Vulcan's looking... Keep up the pressure here, 2.58 left here in the second period. Up three to two after back-to-back -back goals. Brzezinski fires that one on, but blocked there. Another shot there, high and wide there. Chop looking for his option, looking for Heckman. Heckman, fake slapper. It looks as though he just wrist shot it on. And right there in front, but just over oh. the net. And I thought it caught the top net, but it didn't as that was I'm not and then I'm not sure. I think I went went off of Archaea's helmet on that last shot. Yeah, I couldn't tell as RMU gets the fast break as that is Serlinging. Bringing it in and Popular Chuck just gets that save right there as all the Cal U players are going after Serlinging. And that's a matchup right there, the height difference. 
right there. Major height difference between those two. Yeah, uh-oh. And lots oh. of pushing and shoving back and forth between these two teams. Yeah, tempers are start, starting to flare now here. In this third period, maybe be a good one. Yeah, I think Sir Link then came in and took a cheap shot there at the end. I believe you are correct there, Johnny. So interesting to see what the rest of this period as well as the third period will entitle. It's 2-11 left here in the second. Vulcan's able to get this one out as Shearling almost tripped over that one. Able to get past his defenseman. Work towards the middle and then a cross check there. So it'll be an RMU penalty right there. Yep, another power play for Cal U. As I believe. say offside on that call. And well right there they called offside. But the first call they called it a cross checking there I believe on number 16. I think Davis. Not sure. I think they're going to call interference on that last play. But either or, Vulcan's back to the power play for the rest of this period unless they score one. So, looking to set different things up. Yeah, they're one for one on the night eight so far. Vulcan's looking for something here. And a fast break here for the Colonials as that's Lodge working back towards the back net there. And the Vulcans regroup here. We'll get this one back on our way. 140 left in the second period on the power play. What they call cross checking there yep. on Davis. Yep, you were right on that call. The Vulcans trying to get something set up here. They send that one to the back. Yeah, it was Niski's trying to get the at uh, one time or call, but yeah, trying to get the call. Looking, this is that he'll look the other way for Winchuski. Yeah. He look, still calling for it, and now they look towards the other side now. Yeah. Over here looking for Emmanuel. Yeah, tried to throw the needle on oh, it, just skipped that out on him. As we reach a one minute point in this second period, still in the power play, one minute left on the power play. As Winchuski tries to work that one in himself as. And the Vulcans thought that was a penalty. And able to get his own rebound. He fires that far side and it almost looked like it was going to pick the corner but not able to. And the Vulcans get a chance there but not able to succeed as and then we'll go back for this one. One last rush here most likely for the Vulcans try to get something set up here. Yeah, RK uh, had the had that shot scouted out. Well, see the second unit's out there again for or Cal U on the power play. And the Vulcans are not able to keep that one in. El Cortivio not able to keep that one. So the Vulcans, one last rush here, get something. And it's down to 15 seconds here. Have to get some sort of shot. Need to hurry. We're down to 10 seconds now. Left in this one. Vulcans looking for that far side. And that one gets tipped back on net. Two, one. And he'll just hold that one. And that one's again. Yeah. Uh -oh, Push it back and forth it. here. Uh, uh, I think the ref just said 27, and you're go going to the box. And I couldn't tell. Number 27, not happy at all about whatever happened. Yeah, even Arkea's getting in there and taking a shot uh, at number er, 22, I think. And I couldn't, couldn't tell there, but we'll be back with more Vulcans hot hockey for this good third period of hockey on the Vulcan Sports Radio Network and see TV Sports 1. Welcome back here to the Ross Traver Ice Rink as 
We're back for the final third period here of men's hockey as your Vulcans are leading three to two. And at the end of that period, some penalties took place. That gives the Vulcans a power play here. Yeah, uh, they, they had a five second five on three to start at the period. And after that little, oh, uh, little scrub, if you want to call it, it's scr up, scrumble, whatever you want to call it. And that's what I would call it. As RMU gets the puck back, trying to get something going here. Is that was Buhula trying to work around the deep, the offenseman there. Okay, as that one comes right out in front, a big save there by Arkula. You're looking down, and it came right down out in front, Johnny, and almost had an open net. Yeah, a good chance there by Cal U. I'm trying to find out who the penalty was on from number 27 there from Cal U, but I do not see a name on the roster that we were given. Yeah, I don't know. They really got the jerseys mixed up here for us yeah, tonight. This, this has been this has been rough for us, folks. We've been looking at our going off these roster sheets that they gave us before the game, and there's no name or number with 27, I should say. And the Vulcan trying to work something up here, back and forth as they look towards the far side, over towards Manuel. That one gets sort long and wide as Pavlier check will come out for that one. Brzezinski, get this one set up here for the Vulcans. Looking towards all his options. Finds Emmanuel, Emmanuel looking towards the middle, towards Anden, and then far side. Over towards Farsing, or Farringer, not Farsing, I don't know where I got Farsing from. <laughs> as mixing some names there. I am mixing some names as Petty goes hard into the boards there with Brzezinski as that one Right off the pads and we'll give the Vulcans something here. And yeah, Cal U's got to get something going. Uh, and you don't want to give RMU the, the momentum back. I do not want to give RMU at all as they look towards that far side, but did not look as though Manuel was ready for that one. As though he gets sent long. Now and the Cal U power play there. And no icing on the play there because it was cleared out before the penalty was up. 17.50 left here, 3-2 Vulcans. But there are two quick goals back and forth there in that second period. That one just gets dumped in. That's and a nice play there by number 28. Hey, Mike, hey, Fa Faringer. And Faringer playing a very impressive game here as Capello trying to play a good defensive game as well. As Dow Cortesivo almost gives that one up right there, but the Vulcans able to get that one back and off on the run that goes. That's Parkinson getting around his defender. Able to beat Davis and Davis has to catch up. China provide the cloners as they look right in front. Douche, nothing going there as no one gets sent down. It looks as though that will be going down for an icing and it will. So this main line that Cal is bringing out with the Douche, Siak and Parkinson line is really contributing so far. Yeah, uh, they've been in on the grind and since the drop of the puck. They had their first goal of the game. And I believe they had the second goal earlier on in the second period. Yeah, I know. Let's we'll see if they can keep bringing the pressure with 17.07 left here in regulation time. Yeah, I know they had that second goal for sure. Or maybe it was the first goal. Whatever it was, there's a goal by Zach Dush, the senior. I know that one for a fact. Now we get sent down, and the Vulcans aren't able to get to that one, so we'll give RMU the offensive faceoff. Try to get something going here, down 27 to 19. For the longest time, it was Cal U down, but that second period, Cal U was able to take over. Yeah, Cal U just start er, opening fire. It was a shooting gallery down there, there in the RMU. At, and for the longest time, I think because of all the penalties that were going on in that second period, it was why Cal U had so many chances. We get another fast break here. That's a fast break. The Vulcans trying to get something going here, get a little bit of a advantage to make sure that this one's out of reach for RMU. Yeah, uh, right now you need another goal, maybe two. Uda feel they'll put up the cushion here, here, but still a lot of time left to play here or for RMU to try to tie it up. And lots of time, as you said, Johnny. Tingling able to keep that one as the Vulcans go right to the middle, and almost a goal there as that was. Emmanuel, Emmanuel that was able to push right through. There'll be icing there 
for RMU, but Manuel is working right down through the middle and almost was able to get that one on the backhand, yeah. top shelf. Yeah, he was coming in flying and just lost control of the puck there for a hot second. And Vulcans continuing the pressure as they bring out this big line again to Dush. And then, and I can't get the other number, but it looks as though Taylor, oh, maybe a little bit different line here for this third period. Yeah. The Vulcans looking for their options as Anden tries to throw that one on net, but it gets blocked there by the RMU defender. Yeah, it looks like Coach Greenway is going to try, uh, you know, shakes things up here during the third period. And sometimes have to do that. Can't always keep it the same. No matter who you're playing, even if you're winning by a lot, sometimes you got to switch it up as that one. It's deflected off of Serlinging, the one that kind of started all the scuffle early as the Vulcans get this one back as this is Anden working towards the net. A big save there from the RMU goaltender. Yeah, he had another defender or fall in behind him. Looks like we're going to get a, a penalty here against Cal U, who might get another one here. I think he was just trying to push him off, and I think he kind of fell into the net, but I believe that was number... It was either 8 or 18 for Cal U. That uh, was the number 8. He, Jared Taylor, or in the middle of all that once again. Looks like, like he might be the guilty party. No, it's going to be number 17, I think. No. No, number 8. Number 8. There Taylor's going back yep. to the box for the second time. Back Got to some turping going on here or between number 21 and 28. And not what you want. They get penalty twice, especially whenever you have... You know, some other guys on the that aren't playing tonight, you know, can't keep on drawing these penalties. The coach may not like that, but. Yeah, definitely got to play it smart. Right here for the remainder of the game. Don't don't give RMU any chances to try to come back. Yeah, got to calm them down. Is RMU going to look to answer back? And they will. Because that was a snipe from the top pocket. Blake Loggs, number 12 for RMU. And they tie this one up 15-15. Left in this third period. Yeah, looks just teed off on that one. I yeah. mean, that was a rifle of a shot. Yeah, that that one left a vapor trail off of that one. That th I've seen, seen people take short order trips on, on an airline than that. Yeah, that one started low and ended high. Yeah, nothing. And Pavlovich could have done nothing about that one. And just like that, RMU answered back, as we said, Johnny, and now the Vulcans need to find that momentum again to try to get back into this one. Yeah, I think they're going to start playing. Or get ahead it. in this one. They almost answered right there. Yeah, almost an answer there by Faringer, really on his game here tonight. Just kind of motoring all around the ice as they look right towards the front there, towards churning, but nothing going there. So the Vulcans trying to bring the pressure, keep it up on RMU. RMU trying to shut it down, but... Cal U is moving at the moment as Tingling went for the shot but not able to get that one to fall as once again the Vulcans hold it there. Notice throw that one on net as it was deflected so they're able to actually get that one in time. Cheering, controlling the puck, working around the net. He runs into his own player over there. As Cherlinging able to get to that one. Dalgortivo. Up the ice. Vulcan's looking for something. They'll just dump this one in. Hi. Yeah, they need, need some momentum. Um, something to make, make a big shift for them. Um, a hit, a hard shot, big save, something here. Here, Cal, you, you had the momentum to start, but it looks like they lost it now. Yeah, looking for something, you know, get that early power play and just haven't been able to get it back since then. As arm you kind of here at the moment. As, you know, it's about a half court shot as you could say. Yeah, that was a hard shot up from center ice there. And Vulcans looking for some sort of answer as they're able to get it out as that's man Manuel working up, looking toward Deuce towards the middle for the rebound, but a just glove save there from McCarr. And he said, no, sir, you're not taking that one from me. Yeah, RK is going to start making some big saves here. Up two. 27 saves on the day, nothing like what happened during the first game where five goals, but uh, 75 saves during the women's game. For yeah, the you can't, 
the fact that that goaltender stood on her head that way. Oh, my. I don't know how she kept some of them out. That one took a weird bounce. Yeah, it was very weird bouncing for RMU, just clearing that one out. Because that one won't go for icing as Brzezinski is able to get that one just in time. So the Vulcans kind of get something, but RMU get that one right back by Pujola. That one gets deflected wide. Yeah. Uh, Cal U starting to tighten up the defense once again and not watching the turnovers. There's starting to play a little, a little pressure there on RMU. Yeah, RMU. Bringing the pressure here, trying to get something going. Really having Cal U on their toes at the moment. Lean does that one across cross crease, but nothing going. Yeah, they wanted the centering pass, but the lane was blocked there. The lane was blocked. As Marinsky once again sends that one across. Cal U. Trying to get something set up here. 12-15 left in this third. Tied 3-3 after a snipe of a shot from Blake Logs from the Colonials. Yeah, still. Oh, I think, I think there's still vapor trail oh, right in the middle of the rink from that. There may have been. It would have been interesting to see the radar on that one. As that one's intercepted there by the Colonials. Just not able to get all of it with the linging. Yeah, good block there by, by number 20, Carpella. The Vulcans really struggling at the moment to get this one out, and a big save there by Popular Check. Yes. Oh boy, hey, here goes the tempers again. And the tempers flying once again here. It's a little bit back and forth, and the ref not having any of it behind the back of the net. Interesting to see if he'll call a call or not, and either team or just let him play out. I mean, the rate we're going, they should just let him play out unless it's unless necessary. It gets, yeah, you know, if it gets clearly, too far out of hand. Right, either, you know a clear trip or anything along those lines. You know, two teams about hour, hour and 15 minutes away from each other. If oh. that even, and from here. Yeah, sure from I. here you're probably only about 45 minutes, I'd have to say. Yeah, a little under an hour here for RMU to make the travel down 51 in the Ross Draver Ice Gardens. It's one of the older buildings in the area. Uh, the 2017 Craft Hockeyville winner. You are correct about that. I will say this: it was fun to come down for the festivities when uh, they had Hockeyville here. Here you had the Penguins, the St. Louis Blues. I didn't get to meet everybody that I wanted to, but it was still fun and to come down and enjoy that. At yeah, I was still in high school whenever that happened, so I think I watched the game on TV, even though it wasn't here. That was about it. Yeah, the game was played up at Cranberry, the Penguins practice site at the Lemieux Complex. The Vulcans trying to get something going here as they send it cross crease, but not able to find the back of the net as I was sharing. Because that one finds the back of the net, and that one goes in for the Vulcans. Because that was number 28, Mike Faring. And I knew Mike Faring was probably going to answer sometime, and he did. And the Vulcans take a 4-3 to three lead. That's his second of the game here. Here, giving him eight on the season, and the captain of the Falcons is finding the loose puck. Uh, there, you had a bunch of bodies in there. The goalie couldn't find it, and that's how he gets it. Uh, but either way, goal's a goal, or whether it's a dirty one or a clean shot. Yeah, goal is a goal. As that one snuck in that far corner. You can get the Vulcans to leave 4-3 here. 11-10 left in this third period. As Faring gives the Vulcans their lead back here. And yeah, now you got to put a the left, make sure RMU doesn't get them back in this one. And they're starting to pick up up the hitting here. Yeah, it looks as though that Brian Baker took a big hit there as the Vulcans look to answer back once again. And they almost get it to fall in as I believe that was firing once again. That almost made that one again to either get his second or third. I don't know which one. That but been, That would have been his second of the game. And from what they're saying. But firing has is, is not been in a stranger to the scoreboard. And yeah, not a stranger at all. Leading this team. Not in goals, but just leading this team overall. Yeah, he's fourth on the team in scoring. Might 
Might have crept up there a little bit. And that might have just put him in the third spot. Uh, jumping over er, Dal Cortivo. Yeah, Dal Cortivo, that big defenseman back there in the back. The other senior here tonight. As Rosinski looks for his options and he just kind of sends that one down. Interesting play there. Yeah, I'm not sure on that one. I, know, I thought all right, when the puck skipped up over here, or they hit one of the RMU players right in front of us, but I'm guessing I mean, the ref didn't see it. Yeah. And who knows? Could have. We could have saw something different than they did. That's true. We are at a different angle than what the referees are. I'd have to agree with you there as Vulcan's continuing the pressure here, trying to make sure that RMU can't come back as that one caught Heckman in the ankle area. And yeah, he's a little bit of a, a little stinger. Bit. Is. Limp it a little bit, but he's still out there er, putting up the body. And that's what you have to do, especially in this sport. Put up the body, but sometimes it's pay off as Falcons continuing the pressure here. Because that one just gets sent down. And it looks yeah. as though that that will be another icing as the magical number six. Couldn't tell you who it is, but somebody's number six. Yeah, no clue who the number six is for RMU. You know, there's been a couple numbers like that for us tonight and on both sides. Yeah, our side, number 22 is Anthony Manuel, not Bailey Plastier or Williams. If I'm saying that right, I know I'm saying the Williams right. The Vulcans, that one tips on net and a big save there by Popular Check once again, standing large in that net. 20 saves so far in this one with about nine minutes left to go. Yeah, Good luck for him to be big the rest of the way. Yeah, RMU starting to bring pressure now. Oh, they're getting a little more physical. We've started seeing the hitting come up a little bit more now. Oh, after this one. Yeah, a little bit more hitting. I have to say, towards the last couple of minutes, I would have to say it's going to become very physical, yeah. especially if it stays this score. As Vulcan's looking for something here as they just send that towards the middle, towards Taylor. Taylor kind of gets leveled there by... Well, that's another number two. Johnny, number 27 is not on our list either. Oh, good grief. So we got, get this right for us. We got number six, number 27. We're missing numbers all over the place. Maybe we, we may as well just go through the whole thing and see who's not on there because. Yeah, that's like I'm looking at the roster I printed off yesterday and I can't even find anything on that one either. Yeah, there's no 27 on there. So, couldn't tell you. It's a magical 6 and 27. Play that as a lottery today. Yeah, <laughs> 6, 27, 22. Yeah. <laughs> go, go get a pick three ticket. <laughs> Don't even know if that's a thing. That is a thing. <laughs> thing is a pick. <laughs> Ooh. And then collides with oh him, boy. and that player is down as that was a hard hit into the boards. Not sure who that is. As I can't see the number, but he's down. Caught him high as looks as though the ref will blow the whistle. As and here comes the trainer. And RMU's bench is up in arms, and that should be a call. As you can hear the fans in the background, that was a very large hit there. As and then just kind of collided yeah. with him right there near that logo, and I think just the momentum dragged him into the board, but that was a large hit there. And the captains are talking with the referees right now. As he throws his helmet off there. I'm trying to look. At, and I think it's number 16 for him. I couldn't tell who it was there. You know, Austin Davis, I think, is the man that is down right now for or the Colonials. This mm -hmm. is the second time we've had this happen tonight. And yeah, this is the second time. And as we look ahead. Vulcans have one more game next Saturday against George Mason University. And make sure you can come out to that one if you can. To come and watch this one as the RMU player come on. Yeah. Looks as though he's making it off on his own. But yeah, the captain in for what it looks like. And it is number 15. Excuse me, folks. I got that, that wrong there. I was trying to go by the number. There's Nolan and Palula. There's three Nolans in this here tonight. Yeah, Palula. Oh, we have uh, trying to think who. Capello. Capella. Oh, we have you, Noel. Yeah, and then we have me. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to get the third one, right? I was I was getting there. I was trying to find the other one. <laughs> the one down here. 
8-17 left here. And RMU players are still talking to the officials over there on the far, far side. And they're trying to get any sort of advantage here. They're being down right now, trying yeah. to plead their point, but I mean, and you can hear the fans not happy yeah. around us. So we're sorry if you hear any foul language that may come out. Yeah, we do apologize if you hear something over the air or that is not us. We do not condole that on the air. I know a couple of weeks ago, me and TK were on the basketball at home before the game before Hamer Hall, and there were some rowdy fans behind us. We'll just say that. Yeah, I remember that game. I was on the radio broadcast right before that. And you know what fans I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. As we get back in the way here, Siak looking for something here. That one just goes high and wide off the glove. And that one a tipped save there as Manuel tipped that one on net. Vulcan's looking for something here. Late to go up ahead again, five to three. Heckman over. I see that one gets block. blocked there. As looked as though it caught the hand of Serling. Will give once again Robert Morris the chance as they're on the move right now. I can't get the player number actually. That's number eight, Davis. 16 Davis. Yeah, Davis out there. So. And he, he whiffed on the shot attempt he had. I give him props for, for threading the needle, but just couldn't get anything on net on that. Yeah. Threading the needle is the easiest way to put that one. As drove, drove in there the whole way as. RMU continuing the pressure is Sloan once again. Name that I think I've only said one to two times tonight. Another Drives that one shot. in. I was about to say he's got a rocket of a shot. Somebody get the radar gun on that kid. Yes, that one gets fired wide there by Riffner. Vulcans trying to get it out of here. Final seven minutes as it's Vulcans get an attack here. Manual three on two, looking over and a whiff, whiff. whiff there by Douche, upset with himself. Nothing to be upset though about because that's a tough one to give up, but. Yeah, you had the numbers advantage that they're just whiffed on the pass attempt. Mm -hmm. It looks as though that, that Kahula for Robert Morris will be all right. Just looks as though that he's taking a little breather at the moment as he's over there without his helmet on. Yeah, he's getting checked out by the trainer. Yeah. Uh, hopefully everything's all right about with him. Say, he looks as though that he's fine standing up watching the game. So Yeah, he's talking with, uh, I think, his brother. Or er, er Nathan in pool, number 33. I think he's one of the backup goaltenders over there. Interesting. I didn't even know they were brothers, but interesting. The Vulcans trying to get another goal here to pretty much finish out against Robert Morris, but Robert Morris not going away yet, not going out without a fight. That is for sure. Now you, if you remember what I said earlier, Nolan, about Cal, you tightening up the defense and so watching the turnovers, I think RMU needs to start doing that now because they've turned over a couple oh, oh, that have almost led to a goal. Well, yeah. one of them actually did, that uh, the one that put them ahead four to three. And yeah, that was a turnover at last shot. Parkinson just missed the net. Almost picked the corner there, about sealed the deal here. As it looks as though there'll be a penalty here. It looks as maybe as though it was on Cal U, and it may be on Brady Parkinson. We'll if it's on Cal U, I believe it is the way that, the kind of way they're skating. And it looks as though that Nolan Puhula will be done for the game. Yeah, he's probably just for safety precautions. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna get a penalty here. Here, number 21 in for Cal U. U Parkinson is going to go to the box. So big power play here for Colonials. 525, 26 left here. Two minute power play. Could tie this one up. And for Pahula, it's probably more safety precaution. You know, sucks that you had to come out being this close. Want to be able to help your team as a captain, but. You know, it's better to be safe than sorry later on, yeah. if anything serious yeah, is out. Waiting to find out what the call is. It looks as though that it may be. Uh, he must have already made the call. Yeah, uh, I was trying to see if I could find out what it was, but no one was saying it. We'll wait yeah, for the uh, PA announcer to give us the call on that one. I was about to say, I have not seen him make any signal. But 526 left the Vulcans. 
back to the penalty kill. I have to clear this one. Big, big test here as that one gets cleared down. Good Just clear. misses the stick of logs and will go all the way down. You may hear a scream or two like we did earlier from the women's game. Seems as though any time a team went on the power play, there's always a scream. Yeah, I think that was just in the women's game. Yeah, as that one gets sent back down there by Manuel. Well, the Vulcans doing good so far. A minute and a half left on this penalty. So we got a slashing call all of Parkinson. Yeah, interesting. Didn't know if that was going to be what that was going to be, but it's what it tended to be. So the Vulcans trying to get something here. Is that one tips wide? Colonials looking for an answer back here as they look to the short side. Yeah, going with a, a 2-1-2 two, two, two power play. And just like that, RMU answers back as they found him on the far side. Nobody watching, I can't see the number, but Serlinging looked as though that he found Baker. And Baker puts that one away to tie this one up 4-4 with 4.25 left here. Yeah, uh, they started to get that puck rotation going on, on good cycling. Thing from RMU, you had a body in front, good screen. We have a tie game. The Vulcans, no luck for something here. Has now tied 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, the way things have gone in this game, you know, it's been back and forth. Cal U, who once the RMU score, or usually about a minute or so later, or they found a way to tie, take the lead again. Let's see if they can do that here. And then we get sent down all the way, and that'll be an icing, even though it was a cool tip. And we get sent all the way down as tipped off the stick of Faringer. Yeah, you don't want to be taking too many of those down the strip. And so see what uh, Cal you can do here. And Cal, you're going to look for something here. Yep. It looks as though Pahula will watch the rest of the game over there. We got a whistle over here. I wonder what happened. And someone went on behind the play. Yeah, I don't know what they're blowing the whistle about, but something about that player, Pahula, was pounding on the boards for some reason. I don't exactly know why. So we'll find out the call here in a second. On, I don't yeah, even think uh, they know maybe what's up. Find out here in a moment. And you got officials from, you got that. You got the fans are not about happy about fans, that call. Fans want to go home past 10 o'clock. I don't blame him. Get this game moving. Got things to do. Yeah, I got to be at work in the morning, but you don't hear me in here complaining either, though. Work down in the station? Uh, that's nice tomorrow work. night. Work, work. Yeah, work, work. And then, yeah, we got a five-minute major on, that on here, number 15. And they got a penalty there. They got a penalty there on Pahula, who was banging on the glass. So yeah. an interesting penalty there. So yeah, that that's gonna be a game. I'm pretty sure or that's gonna be a game misconduct, and that's a five-minute major for sports from like. I think he was upset about the whole play, that play that happened, you know, over there on the boards that it didn't get called, and that was his payback, pretty much saying, you know, or maybe he said some few. Yeah, the game mis. Disqualification, so you yeah, may have said some words to the boards that, you know, we're not hearing from over here, but that the ref could have heard. So the yeah. Vulcans are going to take advantage here, and this is what they needed. And here's the thing about this, too. Ooh, they could score as many times as they won on a five-minute major. I was a little shocked to see that myself. We were all wondering what was going on. Now we got the answer. Yeah, I saw him pounding on the glass, and I thought maybe something was, like, loose over there, maybe the boards or the glass or something. But he must have said something that that call got drew. But for the Vulcans, 
have to get something going here as RMU actually gets a break here. Yeah, blew a tire in there number 67. That's a big save there by Poplar check. And now it's a goal actually right. for RMU as that one sneaks right through. So RMU takes the lead five to four here on a strange play. Yeah, as number that was 17, Quinn Gilbert or gets the goal on that one. Yeah. Puts, the, puts the Colonials back in the lead again and yeah. for the first time since the second period. Yeah, Quinn Gilbert. Quinn Gilbert puts that one through. Now I was looking at the name Quinn Gilbert. I could have swore I played hockey with a Quinn Gilbert. Yeah, we don't have a location no. on where he's from. As it looks as though Cal U will take their time out here. The 239 left in the game, 344 left on the power play. Yeah, They're just I, trying to get something here now. Yeah, if I'm Coach Greenland, I'm going to try to sell everybody down on try to figure this out. You got out of you are on the power play for the rest of this game. game so you've got to sell it down and take advantage of it. And yeah. with 239 left to go, with 344 on the on the penalty, he to to Pahalua. Yeah, so and if, okay, he's going to have to find a way to come back and tie this one. And even if the Colonials can pull through here and win this game, if I'm Coach Cunningham, I wouldn't be happy with Pahula, especially after taking that penalty, saying that he's out of the game, yeah, that, that he comes and takes that sort of penalty. Yeah, like that, that was uncalled for. Or, and I guarantee you he's going to hear about it on the bus ride back up, up 51. Well, I'm sure he may even hear about it after the game. I don't even know if it'll take to the bus to get him. Well, we'll find out. Oh, we got a center ice face off. Here we go. And the Vulcans going to try to find something here late. 235 left. Need, looking for a tie. And then looking to take the win. And first looking for a goal here early as RMU clears that one once again. And it's yeah. definitely been a high scoring affair here tonight at Ross Draper Ice Garden. And Cal U looking to get this one sowed up as it's now Cortivio looking over towards Siak. Siak fires that one in and out of the glove of Arcaya. It's a big save there yeah. from Tingley. Tingley gets the puck back again. That one gets sent over to Siak. Siak looking far corner, nothing there. The Vulcan's looking to answer back. Parkinson. Nothing there as that one gets cleared down by RMU once again. So the Vulcans, minute and 40 seconds left, try to get something here late to tie this one. Yeah, I'd, wa I'd watch that Vulcans goaltender in, in no, Oplachek. He might be coming out. Oh, I'll oh, watch he's a, with them down one. They're probably going to pull him here or soon. And they're trying to get set up, and the, the coach has the arm up, getting ready to call him. He's about halfway out from his crease, getting ready to sprint to that bench to get an extra guy. That was a big rebound by the Vulcans. Not able to. The Vulcans looking for something here. One, oh, 10 left. And here comes the goalie. Vulcans going for that six skater here. Six yeah, on four. Someone gets sent on net. The Vulcans looking for something here as they look towards the far side. Looking back towards the middle and they score! Big goal there by the Vulcans to tie this one up. 5-5, five, five, 58 seconds left. And they're still on the power play as that was barring on that far corner once again. His second of the night. And we got a ball game, ladies and gentlemen. We got a whole new game here, guys. Guys, nice. tighten up them belts one more time, guys. Here we go. And once again, the Vulcans come out strong. All from the start, it looked as though that they weren't going to be able to get anything to go. And looks yeah. as though RMU's maybe taking the timeout, maybe. Yeah, they're going to use their timeout and talk things over. And it looks as a uh, going to talk this one out, but for the Vulcans, so two minutes left, so still a five on four, so 58 seconds left to try to score here, Johnny. Yeah, you still have the power play for the rest of the period, so oh, it's going to be interesting to see how things go down the stretch, and and keep an eye on the shot clock here, here too, no, and they're up 40 to 30 right now. Yeah, I don't I don't know, Johnny, but you know something that our director Gary Smith just said. You know, if you get possession and you're holding about 20, 30 seconds left, you take a risk and you pull the goalie for a six on four or maybe a little bit less. You know, it's something. Yeah, it, it's a gutsy move, move, yes, but I'd wait till oh, you, got, you have the clock down to 15 seconds yeah. and try to pull him. 
Um, whether you're RMU to try to get it back to five on five, if you can get it into the Vulcan zone, yeah. or if you're Cal U who try to, to take the lead, but what is a double-edged sword? Yes, you get the extra man out there, and you're on the power play on there for six on four. Or, but uh, do you really want to risk RMU winning on an empty net and on a weird bounce on a clearing attempt? Hey, you never know. But the Vulcans gonna look try to get something here left. 50 seconds left. Cal U trying to set something up here. Well, they're burning a little clock, so I think maybe that's what they are going to do. They're going to try to burn some time to see if they can get that extra goal. Uh, the Vulcans take this one in. As Emmanuel looks for his options, looking towards the middle, and he almost gets a shot as he fanned on it. Yeah, it's it's a good play, but if I'm Cal, I need to hurry back so they don't won't get a chance. Yeah, Cal, 30 seconds left here to try to get something before an overtime session. Continue the pace here. Vulcans looking for something as they look toward Faringer. The big say, glove say there by Akara. Trying to keep them in here, but 20 seconds left. I don't know, Johnny. Do you do it? Do you not? I'd wait until to see if you win the face off first if I'm Cal U. You know, I'd say maybe if they, you know, it's a little bit risky. And who knows, it may not even be going through Coach Greenway's head. But if you get like a face off with like five seconds left, maybe you do it. Just to get an extra guy out there to try for an extra body. But Siak looking for his options. Someone gets deflected, catches the net. So that one should be back in the zone again here. Yeah, I think it went off of an RMU stick. So the Vulcans looking for something here. 12.4 seconds left before a possible overtime session. As Parkinson will take this draw. He wins it as that one comes right through. And he's got a, or Cal, or a Colonial on his back there. And it looks as though he'll probably just hold it, maybe take one last shot. A little bit of a fan of a shot, but. Oh, late hit there by number 27. And, and we have still don't know who that is. Yeah, we do. don't know who that is at all. But it'll be interesting. Final minute and five on this power play. Yeah, and that's not a good thing for, for RMU to go down two players into the box. So it looks like we're going to go oh, into the five-minute overtime session here. Here's sudden death. Cal, you still going to be on the power play here for another minute five, talking things over. And I don't know if we're going to get a call on that at last. Yeah, I think we're just going to wait a couple, this 30 seconds, send it to commercial break, and then come back with more Vulcans hockey here for overtime. We'll be back with more hockey here on CDTV Sports 1. Pride and passion drives the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. From 55 NCAA championship teams, 294 individual national champs, and counting. Who's next? Make the PSAC yours. PSAC Proud is winning in athletics and in the classroom. Over 3,100 PSAC student-athletes are honored as scholar-athletes. It's a perfect mix of athletics and academics. It's time to make the PSAC yours. Welcome back here for more Vulcans hockey as the Vulcans tied it up with about a minute and 20 left and still have a minute and five left on this power play going into a sudden death overtime by the Nolan Bison alongside me, Jonathan Saguchi and Johnny, exciting first game for you on the call for hockey and this is what we got, overtime? Yeah, it doesn't get any better than this, no, or oh, it's been a back and forth affair. All right, now let's see if Cal U can capitalize on the power play while they have it for another minute. Five. Yeah. I don't think there was a call made on number 27 there at the end and for that late hit. So we're gonna we're gonna have four on three hockey here for five minutes. Yeah, it should be very good hockey the rest of the way. As I set this one up, the Vulcans looking to take advantage and win this one as Manuel looks for his options, looking for the fake slap, looks toward the far side. Someone comes right out in the middle. And that one just kind of gets chopped, but the Vulcans able to grab this one. And no chase there by RMU. Del Cortivo. Another 40 seconds left to go on the power play. You need to set something up and get hit the puck on net. Manuel looking for his options, looking down low. Faring. Holds it. 
Looks back to Manuel. Manuel over to Dow Cortivo. Manuel whist on the shot as that one just held there by Arcara. Yeah, smart move there by Arcara uh, to hold on to it. Uh, you got 22 seconds left on the penalty, 417 left to go here in the overtime period. You got to get the puck on that while you still have the man advantage. Uh, Vulcans looking for a key face-off win here to try to get this final 22 seconds of possession. They'll get it. Manual over. I believe that is the Dow Cortivo. And there's a little bit of a pressure. Walken trying to get something here. Working down low as Siak hooks for the middle and just off the stick of Faring. The Vulcans still a possession of it. Faring out to Dow Cortivo. On that yeah, on tip. The, on just a miss there. Manual. Manual misses man. wide as well. Yeah. Back to back chances for the Vulcans. As they look down towards the net. That one's tipped. Tipped on net again. Back and forth, don't know what's going on. Cal you bringing the pressure, trying to catch them out of place. And another save there by Arcaria. That one gets sent yeah. down, and it looks as though that one will be on net. And no, it won't be, but no, there's no Cal player back. Yeah, they're going to set a wave off the icing because uh, number 28 made it down there before the Cal U player. I don't think he saw him coming. Yeah, Cal U looks as though they're... This line may be a little bit tired after all that just happened. That one off the stick, Manuel trying to get to that one just in time. And back and forth action here. The Vulcans able to keep this one as it's Faring. Faring with the and shot, Faring with the score. Faring with the goal, ends this one six to five in overtime and your Vulcans win. Big win here for the Vulcans on senior day. That's another two points to get them, in, get them up in the standings. Keeping pace with uh, with Pitt Johnstown on, on as they try to make the rush for the final old playoff spot here. Got is he's 304 left to go in overtime. Big win and from Cal U. Yeah, big win from Cal U. Farring with the hat trick, and that's the way you end it. You know, no better way to do it other than that. I I don't know what to say. Uh, definitely a thriller tonight. Hey, as the teams go to center ice. Hey. Oh, no, that's his second of the game. Okay, no, I thought it was a hat trick. I did, too. I guess we're way off tonight. But for our production crew from Peyton Trollinger to Kayla Kinzo, Gary Smith, director, yourself, Johnny Sagaguchi, and myself, Nolan Beisline, good night, California. <laughs>